welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. Um, this is Coronaville. What's next on a given Thursday? Today we're going to talk about Trump and how he lied about the danger of COVID. Okay, with uh, Stephanie Dalton, Winston Welch, and of course uh, Tim Apicello. So um, this is a, a, a week of revelations, really, Tim. And everyone has seen the Bob Woodward book came out with tapes to back it up, uh, where Trump said that that he knew that this was a deadly disease, even while he was telling the public it was nothing much, it's just the sniffle, the flu, what have you. And, and what does this mean? Because not everybody takes it the same way. Well, Jay, I think it means that he lied. In your intro, you said he, he lied. And his lies, in my opinion, and I think the opinions of many other Americans, is those lies cost lives. Uh, I'd like to just read a real quick quote from Christina, and I'll butcher her last name, Erguza, um, and she said, my dad trusted this president. He listened to the president and followed his advice. So my dad did not panic, instead he died. Donald Trump said, I, I, I didn't wanna panic the public. Uh, so therefore I didn't, you know, I didn't come out to reveal what I actually knew. And um, that wasn't the reason. You and I did a show back in early March, 2020, and we both knew that uh, he was more concerned about the Dow dropping. And the Dow, of course, is what he ties his success to the economy. And if the Dow drops, the economy drops, therefore his chances for reelection go in the toilet. And his concern wasn't for the American people. His concern was for his own reelection. He knew how deadly this thing was and he lied. So that's the bottom he called, line. He called it a hoax, you remember? He called it, he called it a democratic hoax. Yeah. And we said back in March, we go, we don't think so. We think this is real. And you know, well, I wish Republicans would stop believing Donald Trump on this point. Well, here's a case where this daughter has said her, da his, her, her father died as a result of following Donald Trump and not taking it as seriously as he ought to have. Um, Joe Biden is correct. He said he failed his job. He failed to do his job on purpose. This is a dereliction of duty. And it is, it's a dereliction of duty. And it's probably one of the most shameful things next to his frame, you know, is using uh, suckers and losers for our war dead. It's probably one of the most shameful things I've, I've seen happen in, in, in decades. I mean, I've never seen anything like this from any president. Yeah, what would the dead say? They would not have good thoughts about this. So uh, Winston, you know, it, he came right out and said that, Oh, no, he wanted to protect everyone. He didn't want anybody to panic. Uh, and he felt that that was his job, uh, not to panic everyone. Um, first question, and this is a two-part question, do you believe that, all things considered? And the second question is, does his base believe that? Oh, uh, no, I don't. We know that when Donald Trump is speaking, that there is hidden motives and lies often associated with whatever he's saying. And so we can't trust the basic information coming out of him. What I do appreciate is that he, when presented with this information by Bob Woodward on tape, that he said, actually, yeah, I did say that. That was my voice. It wasn't a fake voice. Um, and then concocted a story that he was um, trying to keep people from panicking. But what we needed and what we still need is simple honesty. People can deal with the truth, but when they're lied to, they have no idea. Then what, what the next thing that comes out of his mouth, is this, is this a lie or is this a lie on the lie? And then, and then folks covering it up uh, when, you know, uh, his uh, spokesperson, Kaylee, she says, oh, no, he wasn't trying to, uh, to hide this from the American public. He was exactly trying to hide it from the American public. He said he was trying to hide it. Okay, if, if, if he was trying to prevent that, did he need to go on and then say it was, it was a uh, a Chinese plot or a democratic hoax or that it would you know, magically disappear? Did he need to add all of that? Or could he have said, we're taking a cautious approach here and you know we're gonna listen to the CDC and the FDA. Didn't happen. His base, um, if he says whatever he says, they're gonna believe. So, and you know, there's an, an interesting thing that I was watching and that I, I recommend people watch is, is uh, the social, what is the social dilemma on Netflix now. And it explains why we don't get the same news. So in fact, while we are talking here and we have news sources that may include the Nation, the Washington Post, uh, you know, Atlantic, uh, New York Times, just standard journalism, 
they are being fed a completely different algorithm based on what they have clicked on in the past, who their friends are, what things they've typed into their browser. It's very interesting. So in fact, we are not dealing and they are not dealing with the same set of facts that we are. They are given uh, very slanted information and they would say the same about us. I think the most important thing is to say, get a wide range of news source, incredible news, agencies so that you can make informed decisions for yourself about COVID and all other matters. So as far as his base, if they don't do any um, hunting or searching on this, but there were so many other things this week about what he said about the veterans and, uh, you know, that, that just, if you don't have a bad taste in your mouth right now and think that some of this is true, uh, you really got to start doing some soul searching, I, I would think. I, I'll tell you a short story. Um, in, in late January, you know, I became concerned about coronavirus, and I, and I went to a party, and this was mostly a party of liberal Democrat people, not, not Trumpers, although I'm sure there were some undisclosed Trumpers there. And, you know, my, my party theme that night was to tell them, we had a problem. Uh, Houston, we have a big problem. It's coming soon. It's going to come to Hawaii. And uh, some of these guys, you know, were very influential guys. And they all blew it off. One guy was uh, an executive with one of the airlines. He blew it off. Why? Because he wanted to believe Trump. And I think we forget that back in January, February, we all wanted to believe this was not coming to the United States of America because we were exceptional. We could deal with it. It was not a problem for us. And, and, I, and I find that even though not everybody believed Trump, even though he had told what at the time, 15,000 plus lies, a lot of people wanted to believe him. And we wanted to believe him. Do you remember that, Winston? Did you have an experience like mine? No, I, I knew immediately that this was going to be a major global epidemic. You cannot have 60 million people in China on complete lockdown. Uh, when those images came out, I realized, yeah, this thing is gone worldwide now. We just are waiting until it it pops up everywhere. We had a chance to do some really good containment at that time. Uh, America certainly had the ability to lead the world in uh, contact tracing, containment, whatever whatever we needed to do. We have roadmaps for this. We have planning that, 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 that the administration was handed. I knew that it was going to be something right away. I had um, talked with no, I'm not talking and, about you because you're special. I'm talking about the people you were dealing with. Um, I think that, you know, there's so much else that was coming down the pike with it, re regards to what's going on in our nation that it didn't take, it, it, it's, cr it's a crowded marketplace of disasters. So uh, for COVID to come in here and then all of the lies and confusion around it so that you have people and, and then having him saying, we need to liberate, uh, you know, Michigan or liberate uh, whatever states and cities that that were democratic led these no matter if he was trying to keep the people from panicking he made the situation much much worse and now has shocked credibility mm -hmm. of uh, in, so, in large part of FDA, cdc um uh, and, and then politicized this thing so badly that well that, that's one of the big like arguments that. you know you you didn't want people to panic and yet you have been divisive on every issue you have created divisiveness and panic in so many other ways. Yes. It's hard to believe you now when you tell us that you didn't want anybody. So Stephanie, I have, <clears throat> I have a very juicy, luscious question for you. Uh, I've saved it for you. I hope you're ready. Okay, <clears throat> it's my revelation question. Thomas Friedman said the base still likes Trump right now today, that in many ways they have not been affected by the Woodward revelation. One, Trump doesn't back down. He is strong. And they think, um, you know, that's good. Two, uh, that Trump understands them. And whatever he says, whatever he lies or doesn't lie, um, he understands them. And the, the, the Democrats do not understand them. And three uh, or four, whatever. Um, and, and this goes back to my story about, um, you know, the, the 19th century. And, and how the Midwest really hated the New York railway guys, the Vanderbilt crowd and Andrew Carnegie and Rockefeller, the, the robber barons. Um, the, 
the base resents people uh, that attack Trump because uh, they feel those people are um, more educated than they are, uh, more privileged than they are, and they look down on Trump's base. But they think that Trump does not look down. Trump understands. Therefore, no matter what Trump says, no matter what we find in Woodward's book, Trump is still their man. Thomas Friedman yesterday. So what's your reaction to that? I think that that's, I see that, I see that, and I see that Trump is not of their ilk, but identify, they identify with him anyway, because he's not got the Eastern establishment uh, intellectual uh, thing to, that they have to battle. So everybody else has that, Obama and George Bush tries to, but, but he's not got that that edge of um, in, in, in intellectualism. And I think that there it is, this is what the whole Mao thing was about, is anybody that was intellectual or learned, you know, this was not of the people. And so I'm trying to piece together, the, you know, the patchwork quilt here of these other experiences to understand why, you know, he presents one way, but he actually is their guy. And, um, so, I, I mean, it's also like gangs and, you know, New York City and you Marshall Dillon and Gunsmoke, you know, the bad guys come into town and they've got a leader and anything he says goes and he's going to get that dam in there and use all the way. And, and everybody's going to go with that and that, that their identity is with them. And even though Marshall Dillon offers all this goodness and light and rational doesn't matter these bad guys so frankly i do play over some of those western shows i watched as a kid because there's some i can understand it better remembering that mob of black hatted guys rolling into town I, I think i think we you know on the on the keywords where we you know submit the keywords uh, to youtube we should include marshall dillon here so people can always find the show Okay, uh, Tom, uh, Tim, I have a, uh, I, I have a very interesting, also a revelationary question for you. So we now have, as you mentioned, uh, confirmation that uh, Trump lied, that he really said those things, that he said different things to the public over a period of time. It wasn't just one day. It wasn't just one, one reference. It was for weeks and weeks and months and all that. Okay, so the question, this is like a cross-examination in a, in a trial in court. So, you know, the, the, the question sequence would be something like, so we know now that you lied. How do we know that you're not lying now? You want us, you want us to believe you're telling the truth, but we know you lie. And so my question to you is, when, when does the lying stop? How do we know, now that we know he lies, I mean, he has admitted he lies for his own reasons. How do we know when he is lying, when he's not lying? How do we know that he isn't lying about everything that he is saying about COVID and everything else uh, in the very same way right now? I don't think the press has gone there, but you could make that argument that you would make in court logically to say, well, if he lied on the one occasion, why, doesn't, why don't we take into account the fact that he's always lying? Can't you, can't you make that conclusion? Yes. I, I... Well, I think whether you're a loyal follower and you know he lies, but you follow him anyway, or you're on the Democrat liberal side and you, you definitely know he lies because they, they've documented 20,000 of them, the Post has, or you're that, that rare 11% that sits on the fence and isn't quite sure what Donald Trump is or isn't. Um, I, think you, I think almost everybody would believe that he has a compulsive need to lie. He lies whether he... If he doesn't even need to lie, he lies. And so I think for the last three and a half, almost four years, we've seen this compulsion of his, and I think it's a given. Um, you know, that if you really look at his argument of, I didn't want to panic the population, therefore I really didn't want to re reveal the nature of it, uh, just look at the, the obvious. The obvious is, if you really didn't want to panic people, but you knew it was so serious, why didn't you quietly start producing PPEs for all the hospitals? Why didn't you start doing contact tracing and testing? Because these things would actually get at um, reducing the spread of this virus if you knew it was so serious. Uh, these are just a couple examples of why if, 
you know, why, why didn't you encourage mask wearing if you knew it was this deadly, airborne, deadly virus? So I'm not buying his, I didn't want to panic the population uh, argument. Not for well, a second. Well, the thing about lying on, on COVID, uh, on the hoax, uh, you know, it's just a sniffle kind of thing, is that people died, as, as you mentioned. Um, and, you know, maybe, don't, maybe people don't realize that, uh, that we have also huge losses when he lies, for example, about the Ukraine issue, when he lies about the influence of Putin over his moves, including removing troops from Germany and, and um, Syria, um, when he lies about um, what the Chinese are doing or not doing, uh, when he gets into these uh, tariff fights with them. I mean, these are lies that, that do not result in immediate deaths the way the COVID lie has, has resulted, but they, they result in the decline of the United States. They result in a new world order in which all our lives will be changed. And when he lies about those things, there's also a very high price to pay. And so, I mean, I think we can extend the whole notion of lying with dastardly results to pretty much everything he's doing. You and know, Jay, it's, it's not just, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's not just the lying, it's, it's a strategy to defer or deflect responsibility. It's the, what, what about this or what about that guy? He's doing it right now with this uh, interview. He's saying, why didn't Woodward come out uh, initially with it? If it was so serious, why didn't Woodward come out with it? So there's a classic, what about him? Uh, don't look at me and my lies, but uh, what about him? So this is gonna continue for the next 50 some odd days. And I, I just don't think there's any end to it. Yeah, I, I, and I, I think his followers know there's no end to it, but we're gonna vote for him anyway. But yes, those sir. questions that Tim asked about all those questions you laid up there about why didn't he do this? Why didn't he do that? The, the masks, the PPE, those are such good questions. They he are. Asked, yeah. Why didn't he do that? Well, you know, maybe at the fringe of this, maybe he's lo losing some credibility. And I want to talk about the, the big pharma decisions uh, with Winston. You know, big pharma seems tired of hearing about the warp speed program that he says he's on. I'm not sure what that is anyway. He, he probably calls him and yells at him. That's his warp speed program. Um, so they have a number of them agreed uh, and, and spoke in writing that they were not going to rush things no matter what the politics are. That was a direct reference to Trump, who is using politics for his own political purposes to talk about warp speed programs. And Fauci agreed with that. But I think the most interesting one is AstraZeneca, which is a European company involved in trials. And they paused. That's a euphemism. They stopped their trial because one of the people in the trial got really sick. Um, so that's it's not going well. And either the ones who signed that letter, I don't know if that includes AstraZeneca, and certainly AstraZeneca um, are saying, you know, we're going to do this on our own. Don't push us around. And uh, so this, this opens the question of whether we're going to have a vaccine by October, just a few days, remarkably, a few days before election day is true or another great, big, ugly, ridiculous, fatal lie. Um, and then, of course, not addressing the question of even if there is a vaccine, whether it can be manufactured and deployed um, in any kind of expedition expeditious format, because it takes months or years to do that. You have to have two, two shots, and you have to do the world, which is seven plus billion people. Um, that's not going to happen at the end of November or October. So anyway, what's your reaction to that, uh, Winston? Is he losing credibility here? Uh, well, you know, it's, as it says, we need 8,000 Boeing 747s to distribute a vaccine. Um, and that's an entire ranging between two and eight degrees uh, Celsius to uh, ship this vaccine everywhere. Look, you know, the, these companies know Donald Trump is a blimp, but they're not. They're hundred year old companies. They're major pharma. They have a lot of money to gain or to lose if people stop taking their vaccines. You've already got a very strong anti-vaxxer movement in this country. Um, combined with, you know, now combined with COVID denial or whatever, it, 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 how many people are actually going to get these vaccines? And they, they read the same newspapers you do that people say, I'm not going to get the vaccine. 
because it's a fake disease. And even if it isn't fake, I'm still not going to get it because it's being rushed or it's being made in China or whatever. So yeah. these companies had a vested interest. That, you know, that's in true. And I, it goes back to the hoax thing that Tim and I were talking about. When he was saying it's a hoax, it's a sniffle, it's a flu, yes. that, that has a momentum and it lives with certain people. They, they are stuck on that from months ago. They still believe it's a hoax. Therefore, well, and they're, they're being anti-vaxxers. And, and they're anti-vaxxers because of whatever reasons. This is a desperately anti-science administration. But these folks working in these things, if nothing else, it's the almighty dollar uh, that's, that's, that's motivating them. I think there's good people working in these companies that are interested in public health. But they banded together. It was nine companies banding together. This wasn't just one of them sticking out its neck so it could be chopped off. They realized they needed to speak in unison as an industry to say, we are not coming forward until these vaccines are safe and proven. Now, whether they included uh, Russian or Chinese vaccine manufacturers in there, I don't know, but I'm just guessing no. I'm guessing these ones, uh, they want it to be able to be sold in Switzerland, Sweden, and, and Germany just as much as the United States. And well, if you don't have credibility, it's not going to happen. The whole question I was talking about before the show began, and that is espionage. There was, a, there was a piece, I think, in the New York Times about global espionage that's going on, partly because Trump is isolationist, and maybe largely because Trump is isolationist. So whether the article talked about how the Russians are doing esp espionage in the American universities that are doing research in co on COVID. Uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the companies that are trying to develop vaccines. And that the Chinese are likewise doing that. And also that the, the US through its intelligence network is trying to do that. They're all hacking and looking and sending people around to find out the state of, the state of research. So instead of you know, what the World Health Organization would like to do, encourage everybody to collaborate as science should always do, what we have is a kind of chaos in the research now, according to this article. Uh, what's your reaction to that, Stephanie? Yeah, I understand that uh, I've read there are 369,000 Chinese nationals studying in the U.S. And the Trump uh, admin has yanked 1,000 of those graduate students um, out of the, um, the universities where they're, they're stealing, quote, or learning about military secrets. So, yeah, I think um, he's... He's doing that. And also I wanted to just thank Winston for bringing up the 8,000 cargo jets because that was called the mission of the century to get this vaccine now. It will be the mission of the century. They're starting to talk about it that way because it's such a huge task. So, I, I mean, I think, you know, we're looking at something that's gonna go on for another year. I think your question about the vaccine, it's not, it, the, the question about the vaccine is a good one because it represents the terrible issue we have, and it also is another example of his lying. And one of the one of the reasons, one of the motivations for his lying is that he's trying to garner the credit. So what he's doing is getting the benefit of the effects of getting the the um, vaccine in without it ever happening. So, you know, you want to talk about a hoax, who knows that it will ever even happen anywhere near. He's looking, he's looking for the credit. This reminds me of the incident the back a couple of months ago where he tried to buy the intellectual property of a German uh, pharma company uh, for a billion dollars and take away all their, their researchers. And uh, Angela Merkel stepped in and the researchers said no, and, and his, his uh, initiative fell flat. But clearly he wanted to do that so he could claim and maybe make some money from, um, you know, uh, claiming that uh, it, it was an American solution. Um, and it does give the base, it does give the base energy. I want to go to the college issue. You know, the numbers are going up in the colleges. And Trump is pushing the colleges to open as he is to have the economy open. But a lot of colleges have hundreds and hundreds of people, students who are sick, and some of them are sending them home. And education, higher education, as well as lower education, is in chaos now. There are hot spots around these colleges in Ames, Iowa, I'm thinking, <clears throat> you know, where the, the schools weren't careful, the students weren't careful. Everybody's confused, there's chaos reigning. Uh, they don't wear masks, they don't practice social distancing and they, they get sick. It's a, we have a big problem in this country. It's those early remarks that still have an effect. Trump doesn't wear a mask. 
it's not clear that he's really recommending masks or so social distancing, and they're pushing to have the colleges open. And presto, what do you expect? We're going to have a lot of students sick. So, <clears throat> you know, here we are um, in a place we have been before, I think, where the uh, economy is still in the toilet, uh, where this, now the schools are being pushed and they're in the toilet. Where is this going to go, Tim? Well, according to Donald Trump, the economy is not in the toilet because the Dow is at its all-time high again, and the NASDAQ and the S&P is at its all-time high. Again, he's convinced Americans and his followers, his voters, that the economy is the stock market. Uh, those numbers have come back since the 19.5 on the Dow. They're back to 28.5. Um, so he'll argue things have never been better. Uh, the bottom line is the students are being used as cannon fodder. And it's not about his concern for the students or their, their level of education. It's concerned to get the parents back into the workplace. And the only way that's going to happen is by getting the kids in school so that his, his precious economy in the next 55 days is still going to appear that it's vibrant. And therefore, I'll garnish a vote based on that. Yeah, okay. Well, Winston, here's the hard one. We only have a little time left. And so what's going to happen this week? I mean, he's, he's taken some, some real hits here, uh, even among his base, I'm sure, on, on these books, um, on Woodward's book, um, and uh, on, you know, the revelation that, um, um, uh, what was the other one? Serious revelation. Hey. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, open the newspaper. It's 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 so many. It's hard to keep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. But I mean, so he's taken some hits. Um, his credibility is uh, at least for some people in in jeopardy, and maybe people are reacting. Uh, and my guess, uh, we should all be guessing on this, is he's going to come up with some new distraction, some new lie. Mm -hmm. And my question to you, and I'm asking you because you're so creative, and you can figure out what he's going to do, right, Winston? Uh, what is he going to do this week? What can we expect? Uh, I think we can expect a lot more of the same, um, followed by an extra helping. But remember, he is God's imperfect vessel. So it doesn't matter what he does, his personal characteristic, his lies, his whatever, because he's carrying out the mission of God and uh, has, is the anointed one. And, you know, I just hope that some of his people see maybe it's time to unanoint him and put him back down and say, this is a flawed person giving us really bad information, dividing us and producing chaos. And we, we need to step up as human beings, as Americans. Well, the Lincoln Project office. is doing that. The Lincoln Project has a, a variety of ads out there that demonstrate that he isn't what he says he is. I mean, for example, that he was, he was not uh, pro-life before, he was uh, pro-choice before. All of a sudden he's changed. Um, and, it, it doesn't matter. You know, we have to, at the end of the day, Jay, this is it. While well, Donald Trump is, it, it is, is a constant in all of our lives and discussions and dominates everything. It's up to us. We have to take control of our own situation as best as we can locally, personally. Uh, we're seeing it here in Hawaii. We're seeing it in, in Honolulu. Uh, the states, the cities, the countries all around the world are having different ways of coming up with dealing with this and the best ideas will float to the top the same for these vaccine manufacturers we have to remain optimistic and cheerful because there are a lot of other good players here that are going to go around and um do the best okay stephanie i i i'm not surprised that uh, winston is uh, optimistic that doesn't surprise me um but what about you are you optimistic and and are you optimistic while we know that the post office is failing. And, uh, uh, we're waiting on mail now that we know was sent two weeks ago plus, and we haven't gotten the mail. Um, and I think it's just lining up for more extraordinary delays around the ballots. Are you optimistic? What do you think that Trump is going to do in the next week to distract us from the realities of COVID and voting? He'll do something because Bill Maher's already unleashed the, the next, North, South, like South, the South Carolina guy, you know, he say no mail, no cards, no flowers, no beauty products, no Amazon, do not mail it. And all the corporations that are sending out all this junk, junk, that they got to stop sending that for two weeks and just let the post office dwindle down to nothing but having to deal with these ballots. So, uh, so I think Trump's not liking that because I believe we can do something like that. And that's why at first, like when you were alarmed in January, I wasn't because it's America. 
we could deal with this. You know, we just beat Ebola. We had two <laughs> Ebola problems. So you, you were <laughs> optimistic in January. Are you optimistic yeah. now? We don't have a problem. Oh, she's optimistic things. now. Okay, Tim, how about happen. you? Are you optimistic or are you planning a, a trip to a, a remote location in the world to wait this out? Well, my modus operandi is plan for the worst and hope for the best. Uh, the bottom line is, the bottom line is, no, I mean, Donald Trump is going to create something out of nothing. Again, a, a shiny silver object. And it's going to be a, a big one because he's, he's the Bismarck and he's taken a direct hit on his interview with Woodward. And so he's going to create a big, grand, shiny object and watch it. It's coming. It'll be here in about a week, week and a half. Okay, before we go, I, I remember the other, uh, you know, place that he took, he took a hit, and that was with the military comments. I was going to say, yeah, the military. Yeah, yeah. And where is that yeah. now? So, so uh, I'll, let me quickly ask all three of you. Um, Tim, the military comments, has, has he lost the military, yes or no? He's losing them fast. Yeah. And Winston, what do you think? I agree uh, that, that, that this is one thing that actually is making a little bit of a dent. Yeah, good. And Stephanie? I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful like what, what Tim and, and Winston say. Okay, yeah, let's all they, be they're hopeful. Man, and they're not making a big food ad out of it. They're just- what, what I like about Corona is, is that we don't get distracted. Corona watch. <laughs> we, we look for the distractions, but we don't buy them. We're, getting We're on it. Thank Tim. you so much, Stephanie. Thank you, Winston. Thank you, Tim. See you next time. Aloha. Aloha.